Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm really quickly going to show you how to create a decent looking hair shader in EV. So I'll make this file available for anybody who wants to download it in the video description. So right now in EV the principal BSDF shader doesn't work. It works fine in cycles but in EV it just shows up as black. So um, apparently one of the developers uh, said it might be a while before it actually starts working in EV. But luckily there are other ways to set up uh, decent looking hair shaders. So uh, let's just, before we begin, uh, let's just take a look at the scene and the render settings. So the scene here is very simple. I've got three lights, three point lighting set up, and my camera. And here in the render settings, I've got a few settings here. Um, I've set the resolution to 1920 by 1080, but rendering at 120% resolution. So it's slightly larger than your standard HD frame. Uh, we've got post-processing, I don't think there's anything here, uh, these are fine. Right, so the hair settings here are pretty important. So by default it's probably set to strand. Now strip is better, because it actually lets you show the thickness of the hair. But strand is fine for previewing, so we'll leave it on that, and then we'll switch to strip for the final render. Sampling is fine, I'll keep it like so. Um, film. That should be fine. Sometimes uh, you can play around with this a little bit to get better looking hair rendering, but for now we'll leave it at, uh, at that. Um, for the shadows, we'll enable VSM, so by, by default it's set to ESM. <clears throat> I'm just enabling VSM because I think it looks a little bit better. And uh, also you can enable, enable high bit depth and soft shadows. So yeah, it kind of makes it look a little bit better. Um, indirect lighting, I've just set the diffuse bounces all the way down to zero because um, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference in this particular scene. So for the special effects you can enable whatever you want, but I'm just, I've just got these two enabled. Screen space reflections and ambient occlusion. Not really sure if screen space reflections makes much of a difference. Uh, you might need a reflection probe or something like this. Not quite sure, but I'll leave it on anyway. Uh, and then obviously if you want to be fancy you can do some of the others like bloom or whatever so that's uh, basically how that looks um, the hair itself uh, is all grown from a sculpt mesh so it's not directly from the model it's from a separate mesh um, and then here in the hair settings I'll quickly show you what my, in the particle settings I'll so show you what my settings are so I've got um, yeah, the render settings, uh, this is all pretty standard. Uh, just, you can disable show emitter because if in the final render uh, you've got this enabled then it'll show the actual sculpt mesh and that's just, uh, it doesn't look pretty. So I'll just disable that. Um, strand render, all of this is fine. B spline, I usually enable this and then set my steps to 6 or 7. So. That should be fine. Uh, parent particles, I just that's optional, but I enable it so it shows um, each parent particle, just a few more particles in your system. Um, viewport display, um, yeah, it's leave that more or less the same. Uh, I've got my strand steps for the viewport display set to six. Um, guard hairs, all this stuff. Showing meter also disabled for the viewport, so. That's fine. Uh, children settings interpolated, display amount 50, render amount 100. Again, this depends on your own particular scene and character. Um, all of this stuff. Uh, that's more or less what I use. Parting settings, I've got this set to about 0.6. So that's, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically how each, how strong an influence each parent strand has on its ch children. So if that's set to zero, the hair tries to sort of, yeah, it's a lot more loose, and when it's set to one, it's a lot more tight, like the clumps are a lot tighter, so that's that. Uh, clumping, here's my clumping curve, fairly standard. Uh, roughness, uh, kink settings, we've got the curl here, and amplitude settings are like so. Hair shape, uh, so this is like the, the shape of each strand. You won't see a difference if you tweak them now, because the strand settings are set to uh, yeah strand not strip but for the final render um, 
the thickness settings are pretty important. So I've got my root set to 0.4 and my tip to 0.05. This is scene specific. So depending on the size of your model, you want to uh, make these either larger or smaller. And that should be everything. I think that is everything. So now we'll start building the shader. It's going to make my shader view here a little bit larger and select the hair system. I've got it selected there. All right, let's get started. New. And it gives us a principal PSDF shader with, um, with an output. I'm just going to delete this because I don't need it. I'm going to use a much simpler approach. I'm going to add in a diffuse PSDF. So very standard, very simple. I'll just plug it in there. Now we want to put some color in here. So I'm going to add in a color mix RGB node. I'll just plug it in here. So now we want two colors. And the first one is going to be sort of a lighter color. I'll go for a, you can use whatever you want, but I'll go for sort of a desaturated light yellow color. And then the darker one is going to be the same color, but uh, significantly darker. So something like that should be fine. Um, okay, so now we want these two colors to be mixed together in a, uh, in a random way. So for that, I'm going to use the input uh, hair info node. And this node is very important to this tutorial. So I'm going to use the random input uh, output and put it in here in the factor. And what this will do, uh, let's just wait for it to update. And as you can see here, it sort of just mixes them randomly. So if you want to have a little bit more contrast, you can add in a converter color ramp. And it will give you, uh, if you want more lighter hairs, you can uh, move this one more to the right. So if you want more darker hairs, you can move this, and so on and so on. OK, so now I'm going to, uh, we've got the randomness. I just want to add in a gradient. So I want the hairs to go from dark to light. And for that, I'm going to use another color um, mix node, Shift D. I'll just duplicate it and then uh, add it in here, and then I'll set it to multiply. And then for the darker color here, let's go with something like that. And then uh, for the factor, I'm going to use the intercept. Just make this a little bit wider. So I'm going to use the intercept output here and plug it into the factor. And what this will do is it will make a nice gradient. But as you can see, this is the wrong way around. Uh, unless you want it like this, but I want the dark hairs to start at the top. So I'm going to duplicate this color ramp and just plug it in here. And with this, I can now control uh, where it starts and so on. So I'm just going to hit these little two arrows to invert it. So I've got the dark hair on top. And then I'll just tweak it until I like it. All right, it's a little bit too dark now that I think about it. So I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. OK, so now we've got the dark gradient. Uh, I want to add in another, another gradient. And that's, uh, hang on, let me move this. All right, so the other gradient I want to add in is um, like the first one, but I want the tips of the hairs to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to set this to screen. Oh, where is it now? Screen. There it is. And I'm going to use a yellowish, a light yellowish color. Pretty light, but it'll be fairly subtle when I'm done with it. So let me use the intercept again, because the intercept gives me the gradient. Uh, by the way, you should probably enable all these clamp settings just in case just to avoid any craziness. All right, and now I've got my, my gradient, but it's a little bit too uh, strong, so I'll just add in a new color ramp, converter color ramp, this one. And with this one, I'll control uh, how far uh, the light color spreads. So about there, about should be fine. I want to saturate it a little bit more, like so. And also, uh, the strength is too high, so I'll just bring down the strength a little bit. I want the hair color to be a little bit lighter overall, so I'll just come, uh, come in and 
lighten the color a little bit like that should be fine all right so now we've got the color and that's fairly simple and you can always add in some extra custom colors or dye or whatever you want just add in sort of a new um, node here and continue with like this chain of colors but so now we want uh, reflections so very simple let's go to shader add shader uh, I use the add shader because it's easier than the mix shader in EV uh, in a lot of cases it does seem to be a lot easier uh, although it's not quite as realistic but that doesn't matter so shader uh, now I've got my add shader I'll add in a glossy shader and so for this glossy shader I'll just plug this in here and then I'll just set the, the uh, color a little bit lower maybe like so I'll add in a little bit of a warmer color um, technically that's not physically correct uh, normally hair, uh, as far as I know, the specular highlights on hair are uh, always white or very, very close to white. But for this case, um, it will work fine. All right, and so the roughness, I want the roughness to be a lot lower. And here you can see we've got some nice results. Uh, it's still a bit strong, so I'll bring it down even more. Uh, maybe a little bit more rough. And so on you can play around with it but all right so optionally i can add in another gloss shader and make it a little bit sharper than the previous one so a little bit brighter like this and a little bit a little bit less rough oh, okay so that's too much so basically what i've got now is two shaders two different shaders and they're sort of working together to give me that final that final look so so yeah, you can uh, play around with this a little bit. Um, yeah, so that looks pretty good. I th I still think the hair is a bit too uh, too dark. So I'll just add in a screen node here, and I'll just use it to sort of bring bring up the color a little bit, not too much. And also I can use this to sort of control the overall overall color of everything. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now before we hit uh, render for the final render, obviously I you have to remember, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial, we just want to set the strand render setting to strip here. So I'm just going to enable that and um, just wait for it to update or if it doesn't update you just hit tab and hit tab again so it, it ought to update and this is what you get so it's fairly noisy even though this is EV but um, if you want less noise you can always come and uh, tweak the samples here so I'm just going to save and then we're going to try a, a quick um, final render here so it's a little bit slower than usual um, but it's still extremely fast much faster than cycles and this is what you get. Um, it's pretty good. Let me see if I can uh, sort of make this full screen, maximize area. All right. So this is what you get. Um, yeah. And, and in my opinion, this looks fairly decent. And uh, yeah, if you want, uh, you can see down here, it's a little bit noisy still. Uh, if you want to fix this, just uh, I think a higher sample count should be good and it'll fix that. But uh, yeah, that's basically how. I approach um, building shaders in EV now. Uh, I might make another tu follow-up tutorial on this uh, if I find a better way or if anybody else has got a better way to do this or any suggestions, tips or tricks, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, for now, this is what I use. Um, hope you guys enjoy this and uh, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Cheers.